Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss the concept of relationships in ER diagram or an ER model. First, let us define relationship. A relationship is an association or a connection or a link among two or more entities. We have already learned what entities are in our earlier videos. For example, teacher teaches student. Here we have two entities or objects. One is teacher and the other is student. And teachers is a relationship between these two entities or objects. This relationship connects or links these two entities. Hope you understood the meaning of relationship. Next let us see the degree of relationship. Degree of relationship denotes the number of entity types that participate in a relationship. That is, it tells how many entities are associated or linked together. Relationship type of degree 1 is called unary relationship. Unary relationship exists when there is an association with only one entity. For example, here we have only one entity that is linked or related to itself. So, a relationship type where there is only one entity participating is called unary relationship and its degree of relationship is 1. The next relationship type is binary relationship. A binary relationship exists when there is an association among two entities. For example, in this relationship, there are two entities that are linked together and hence this is a binary relationship and is of degree 2. Next of degree 3 is the ternary relationship. A ternary relationship exists when there is an association among three entities. Here in this example, we can see there are three entities that are linked together or connected together by a relationship. Since three entities are participating in this relationship, it is called ternary relationship and is of degree 3. This is about the degree of relationship. Next, let us discuss about the different relationship constraints. The first constraint is cardinality ratio. Cardinality ratio is the maximum number of relationship instances that an entity can participate in. You will understand the definition better with few examples that we will be seeing. The possible cardinality ratios for a binary relationship are 1 is to 1 or 1 to 1 relationship, 1 is to n or 1 to many relationship, n is to 1 or many to 1 relationship and m is to n or many to many relationship. Let us see few examples. Here we have two entities employee and department and the relationship is managers. Now let us learn how to write a cardinality ratio. Here one employee can manage at the most or maximum one department. And one department can have at the most or maximum one manager. This is how you write a cardinality ratio. So this is one to one relationship. Let us see another example. Here we have two entities employee and department and relationship works for. Here one employee can work for at the most or maximum one department. And one department can have maximum of n employees. So this is n is to 1 or many to 1 relationship. The next example that we have here is student studies subject. Here one student can study any number of subjects and one subject can be studied by any number of students. So this is m is to n or many to many relationship. Hope you understood what cardinality ratio is. It is the maximum number of relationship instances that an entity can participate in. The next constraint is participation constraints. Participation constraints specifies whether existence of an entity depends on its being related to another entity. Again, you will understand this definition better with the help of an example. We have two types of participation constraints. The first one is total participation and the second is partial participation. I'll be explaining these two types of participation with the help of an example. So here in this example, we have two entities, employee and department and relationship managers. Here I have managers relationship set with three relationship instances. Also I have employee entity set 
E1, E2, E3, E4 and E5 as employees and department entity set with D1, D2 and D3 as the departments. In this example, employee E1 manages department D1 and employee E3 manages department D2, employee E4 manages department D3. So this means all the departments should have one manager. Here the entire department entity set participates in this relationship manages and hence total participation which is represented by double line. Whereas in the employee entity set, not all employees will be managers. Here only E1, E3 and E4 are managers. So this employee entity set participates partially in this relationship type manages and hence partial participation which is represented by a single line. So the participation of this entity in this relationship type is partial and so a single line and the participation of this entity department in the relationship manages is total and therefore double line. I hope you understood the definition of participation constraint. It specifies whether the existence of an entity depends on it being related to another entity. These are the two relationship constraints that we have seen. The first one is cardinality ratio and the second is participation constraints. Now since we have seen in our earlier videos about entities, attributes, the symbols used in the ER diagram and also we learnt now about relationships in this video. Now let us see a complete ER diagram based on the sample database application that we discussed in the previous video. That is an ER diagram for a company database. We have already seen the requirements gathered and the initial conceptual design of a company database. Now that we have also learned about relationships, let us see this ER diagram. We had identified four entity types, employee, department, project and dependent with its attributes. We have already discussed the cardinality ratio for this relationship and this relationship. Here one employee can work on any number of projects and one project can have any number of employees to work on. So this is M is to N or many to many relationship. Next, one department can control any number of projects and one project can be controlled by maximum one department. So this is one is to n or one to many relationship. So for an ER diagram, we first need to know the entity types, the attributes for each entity type, relationships and the relationship constraints. Relationship types can also have attributes just like we have over here. Next, let us see attributes of relationship types. Attributes of 1 is to 1 or 1 is to n or n is to 1 relationship types can be migrated to one of the participating entity types. In 1 is to 1 relationship type, attributes can be migrated to either of the entity types or any one of the entity types. In 1 is to n or n is to 1 relationship type, attributes are migrated only to the entity type on the n side of the relationship. I will be explaining these concepts with the help of a diagram in the next slide. Now in M is to N relationship type, some attributes can be determined by a combination of the participating entities, that is by combining both the entities and not just by a single entity. So here in a 1 is to 1 relationship type, the attribute of this relationship type can be migrated to either the employee entity or the department entity, any one of the entities. So just as we learned in 1 is to 1 relationship type, the attributes can be migrated to either of the entity types. Next in a n is to 1 or a 1 is to n relationship type, the attributes of the relationship type has to be migrated to the n side of the relationship. So here the attributes will be migrated to this entity. And then we have m is to n relationship type. This attribute hours, which is the number of hours an employee works on a project, this attribute is determined with a combination of both the entities employee and project and not separately by any one entity. So that is about attributes of relationship types. Next let us see what are role names. Each entity type that participates in a relationship has a particular role to play in that relationship. So the role name 
signifies the role that a participating entity plays in each relationship instance and also explains what the relationship means. Generally, role names are necessary only in certain cases. That is, it is necessary only in recursive relationships. A relationship is called recursive relationship when the same entity type participates more than once in a relationship but in different roles. So in such cases, role names become important or necessary for distinguishing or differentiating the meaning of each participation. Now let us see this example. Here we have only one entity or the same entity type that participates more than once in a relationship. This is a recursive relationship. So in such cases, it is necessary to mention the role names to differentiate the meaning of each participation. Here the employee entity type participates twice in supervision, once in the role of supervisor or boss and once in the role of supervisee or subordinate. So this is about role names and recursive relationships. Next let us see the alternative notations for ER diagrams. So this is one of the alternative notations for specifying the structural constraints that we just learned, the cardinality ratio and participation constraints. This notation associates a pair of integer numbers, which is represented this way, min, comma, max, with each participation of an entity type in a relationship type where min is greater than or equal to zero and it is also less than or equal to the max value and max is always greater than or equal to one. Let us understand this better with the help of an example. So here we are taking the same relationship type that we have seen in the ER diagram that we just discussed. Here we have two entities, employee and department, connected by a relationship managers. And whenever the min value is zero, it means partial participation. And any number greater than zero is total participation. In ER diagrams, we either use the cardinality ratio and participation constraints or we use the alternative notation, the min-max notation. Here this min-max notation is for this entity employee and this min-max notation is for this entity. As we have already seen earlier in this video, not all employees will be managers. Hence partial participation in this relationship type managers, which is denoted as zero. Whereas all the departments in this entity set has managers. That is, it participates totally in this relationship type managers and hence a total participation. Now this max value specifies the maximum number of relationship instances an entity participates in. So one employee can manage at the most or maximum one department. Similarly, one department can have at the most or maximum one manager. So therefore, one comma one. Now let us look at this example. Here we have two entities, employee and department, and the relationship type works for. So here all the employees work for one or the other department. So there is a total participation. Similarly, all the departments have one or more employees. That is all the departments participate in this relationship. Hence a total participation. And one employee can work in at most or maximum one department. Hence the min max notation is one comma one. Similarly, one department can have n number of employees and hence one comma n. So this is an alternative notation for ER diagrams. Next, let us see few terminologies in enhanced ER model or EER model. The first one is generalization. This is a bottom up approach where two lower level entities combine to form a higher level entity. That is, these two lower level entities combine to form a higher level entity. So this is a bottom up approach called as generalization. The next terminology is specialization, which is a top down approach where it defines set of subclasses of an entity type. This is exactly the opposite of generalization. So as we see in this example, an entity is divided into a set of subclasses. And so it is a top-down approach. Hope you have understood these two terminologies. With this, we come to the end of this video. Hope you have understood the concepts of relationships in ER diagram. Thank you.